Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Embody Your True Essence with me, Ikwe. It's Tuesday. It's July 30th. It's, it's crazy how July <laughs> went so fast so far. And then Vancouver is super cloudy. <laughs> And it got colder. <laughs> I was gonna put on a jacket, but I decided to. Um, I decided to stay in my short sleeve because a part of the reason I do this live, I'm testing my fear of feeling cold. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Hi, Denise. How are you guys? Hi, Owen. <laughs> good to see you. Happy summer. It's definitely not a summer weather today in Vancouver, but it's supposed to warm up. So hopefully. But the clouds, we had a long, like prolonged rain yesterday and, and it was actually very cold. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I guess we need that kind of uh, rain in the middle of summer so that, hi Owen, so good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I know you're doing good. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's just, you know, probably you need, we need that rain to going into that most exciting highlight of summer, which is the first week of August in Vancouver. I feel like the first week of, good morning, good morning, Monita. I feel like that um, the first week of August is all about, you know, celebration of communities, different communities. So when you look at, um, when you look at like, you know, there'll be a Vancouver Pride, there'll be a Vancouver Street Dance Festival, which is follows on the same weekend and a couple of different festivals like Japanese Festival, Powell Festival. That's all I know. But I know that it's like lots of things are happening on the first week of August. So a um, couple in the past couple of years, I remember, you know, uh, with that global one, one, global warming that people say, um, you know, we're seeing like the wildfire with the smokes. And so I guess we don't have to see that <laughs> with these rains. Yeah, how are you guys feeling? So I'm just going to type in my name. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Ikwe. My name sounds like eco-friendly way, eco way. And I have my facelift class, facial facelift class coming up. Uh, I'm just going to type and then pin. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it's an online face facial facelift class this Saturday um, on August 3rd. And Human Garage is hosting, and I'm very excited to share um, how to uh, share how to, <laughs> how to connect with Basha. And um, you can, um, Human Garage, uh, this is the website, so humangarage.net. Yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. But this class will be very exciting. And um, humangarage.net, uh, you need to pre-register. And if you can't attend live, um, you're going to get the recording. So, yeah, very exciting. Hi. Hi, everyone. So today is, I was just looking at serious joy as usual. Uh, this is a speaking meditation time for me. Um, sometimes I'm speaking all by myself and people comment. And if you have any questions, I'm here. But um, I started to bring some people in to share and discuss, and I'm, it's been a really great, great time. But today is, um, unless anyone have any requests to go on live, uh, I want to explore some of the things that I'm going through, and if you can relate to that, that would be awesome. So right now, it's uh, step seven still. Um, it's, uh, step seven is about Pisces energy. It's about intuition. And um, uh, we're at this like powerful place where you could shift the timeline. And then, you know, we talk about multiple timelines and how we are constantly choosing our timelines and it was shifting and it's all up to us. And um, yeah, this energy will probably be done in about 90 minutes. <laughs> and then going to step eight, which is a Capricorn energy. But thinking that, um, you know, uh, my sun sign has a Capricorn energy, but I'm a Libra, so 26 Capricorn. I'm based on the serious joy, uh, which is a partnership, a partner up with the Human Garage. I work with Human Garage. Anyways, um, my gold story. So when I say gold story, I'm talking about midheaven. So when you look at the astrology, you can see your birth chart. If you guys are in if you are interested, I can help you read your chart. Um, but um, MC, when you look at that 
chart and see it's your mid mid heaven and mid heaven is basically where you're heading that's your goal story and when i look at my chart uh, my goal story is actually 16 Taurus, and that means 16 so net to seven so it's an intuition pisces energy with um with Taurus. so basically i am aiming to connect with a spirituality and a god that's the energy and then give divinity in me and and then manifest through that so i think that net seven is actually more um something that i need to dig deeper i feel rather than step eight because i may mean, feel like you know i've been talking so much about being capricorn and capricorn energy being controlling the leadership making decisions i feel like i'm getting used to that so i would love to explore more of that um Pisces energy and um, so I will go just going to read about what Sir Joy have to say if you guys can uh, relate to that that'll be awesome so step seven is about I sense it's all about receiving the intuition um, considering that my mid heaven is so my goal story is 16 Taurus um, when I got to talk to Sensei Christopher, he said that maybe somewhere in the past life, I somehow failed to listen to my intuition, but my heart was super open. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about that combination. You know, we're in this Leo season, it's all about coming back to our heart. And okay, what is like for me to honor my heart desire what my heart has to say but also have the good balance of listening to my intuition because let's say if you love someone so much you know can be toxic because it's like you're not maybe prioritize sometimes you're not prioritizing yourself because you love someone so much and if that loves if that person that you who you love so much asking you to do something and but on the other hand that decision that that action could jeopardize your truth, integrity, do you still make that decision, right? So something that I've been thinking, maybe somewhere in the past life, this is where Polly fail, you know, considering that I have um, that chart and then you, I, you can see the glimpse of what could, could have happened in the past life. So that's the Pisces energy, intuition. This is the energy of your subconscious, psychic and intuitive energy it is a spiritual energy that connects your inside world to your outside world the energy of i love leo is your source energy that connects your heart to creation so you could say you're 100 percent aware of your spiritual reality today inside out in the first half of the step seven is to forgive any judgment you're holding against yourself you may be harboring memories of time where you let yourself down, your heart was hurt by your own poor judgment, or times when you feel you failed yourself. Self-love requires that you do not hold grudges against yourself. The punishment energy not only makes you feel bad, but dampens your creativity and creates problems that reflect the original errors, reflect the original error in what you create and manifest. By holding on to self judgment, you hold yourself back. After, forgive, after you forgive the past, your heart and intuition will be free to in, intuit about the future. Over the last week, you have been observing for yourself that approach, the attitude, follow-through capabilities you have for self-love. If you spend any time feeling bad in this time, you know your efforts are falling short. <laughs> All of your experiences are pointing to a greater understanding of what your heart needs for yourself day to day. With your intuition and heart clear about the past, point your awareness towards your future's, future's obedience. Your intuition will sense today what is in alignment with your heart's needs and direction which may come with a warning or important information. I'll say this again. Your intuition will sense today what is in alignment with your heart's needs in a direction which may come with a warning or important information. We will also get intuitive hits about the time of things to come. In each of your stories today, examine your heart and intuition for the best course of self-love in the areas of your life. So it's a powerful day. Yeah, listen to your heart and intuition for the highest and best path of self-love.
forgive the past. Probably the best takeaway today will be that spiritual lessons and realization you have about your life. You will come to see how far you have spiritually grown with yourself. Remain open and without judgment to see everything you need to see. Bless you, inner child. I'm aware of my intuition today. It's super important to, you know, um, remove your self-judgment. <laughs> That is hard. <laughs> what I learned the last month and during the cancer season is it's okay, allow myself and give myself permission to judge myself <laughs> because I think the worst, worst pattern is you judge yourself for judging <laughs> and being stressed about being stressed, you know. I had to get go get my day started there. Thank you for reading. Oh, thank you, Owen. Yes, my Pisces friend. Yes, I love that. <laughs> so I think it's, you know, and but where I found peace, I keep saying this, where I found peace was I am okay to judge. Just allow myself to just be who I am because authenticity is the most important High, highest frequency that you could embody and the reason why I say this embody my true essence is it's like I really want to embody this I don't want to be the person that I always preach but you can smell that you know if someone's is preach all they want but it's not embodying that teaching and that's just emptiness right so I really want to be the person that embodies what I preach and what what she preaches and uh work through that so anyway that's where i am and in order for me to embody what i say it's feeling it in my body so i am not judging i am not discriminating against whatever comes at me right so it's about that balance between my inside and an outside how can i find harmony <laughs> How can I find harmony within myself when the outside gives me all kinds of clues and um, triggers, right? It's a stimulation. It's an outside stimuli. And when the outside stimuli comes, there is no right or there is no good. There is no bad. It's all just energy. And it's just that energy motion comes and then we feel the sensation in our fascia, go through the layers of fascia, and that becomes the feeling. So in order for our energy motion and the sensation turning to feeling, we need the narrative, we need the story. And that's when fascia comes, right? Fascia is our perception how we see the world this is all the patterns are stored in a subconscious the fascia is our subconscious it's a story is um the record you know who we are what have we done <laughs> so emotions perception cocktails <laughs> that becomes the narrative it's a story so here's the power right when the energy comes and you have your pre pre um, determined perception, and you know this your perception that you have in stored in your fascia in your in your subconscious can be very rigid, can be very solid, can be very flowy depending on your character, what you have done in the past, but how you respond before you create this <laughs> create this rice bowl. <laughs> we all have a power to choose, okay, am I going to react to this or am I going to respond differently? And this is the power, this is the power, and I keep telling myself, okay, how can I, what, well, in order to do so, first of all, we need to catch the pattern, right? In order to catch the pattern, you need to calm down yourself, so calm down your nervous system so that you notice, <laughs> that's the first step. Because if you don't know your, if you don't catch your pattern, then you're just gonna create the, another pattern, the re repeat the pattern. So in order for us to do so first, calm down ourselves. Always find our center through our breathing, through our heart. Okay, I am all that I am. <laughs> 
I am that I am. So, okay, now I am calm in my own center. Now, energy comes. I catch the pattern. I'm learning that. Maybe, uh, good morning. Good morning, Jonathan. My, maybe I'm not able to catch some of the patterns because they pay attention to the sudden pattern, that talk, how you talk to yourself, self-talk, right? This is, this is where we need to catch, okay, why am I speaking negative about myself? How am I interpreting when somebody did something? Why am I thinking this way? Why am I thinking negatively, right? So when you ask yourself, when you catch the pattern, and it's okay to feel this way first, so validation of your emotions, validation of your in energy, emotion that comes. Okay, I'm feeling this way. I allow myself to feel, okay, it, I am safe to feel these emotions. I don't need to resist. This is how I feel this way. I feel like this person is rude. <laughs> I feel like this um, situation is really shitty, and it's okay. I allow myself to feel that. But where the power is, Instead of creating a narrative for yourself, okay, my feelings are valid. Now, how can I respond differently? In order for us to make different choice is to, instead of suppressing the emotions, instead of resisting emotions and pretending that nothing's happening, <laughs> You acknowledge the feeling, you hear the feeling, I hear you, thank you for being here. But slowly practice that, good morning, debris, good morning. Practice that so that those little narrative and emotions that you have around a certain event or that person, it doesn't bother you anymore. It's not that you're suppressing emotions, but you don't make this thing so big. <laughs> but it's almost like, it's almost like it's just, I'm, I'm okay, I'm just like speaking whatever comes up right now. It's like seeing those problems and emotion with a microscope and then maybe in your mind downsizing them, downsizing, you know, downgrading them. You acknowledge and you hear you, thank you. But it's kind of just like, Ooh, <laughs> making it smaller <laughs> so that it's bothering one of you. Hmm, okay. I don't know if that's a good solution. I'm just thinking about it and exploring. How would you, maybe type in the comment, how would you deal, so when an emotion comes and you're feeling all kinds of sensation and you're feeling the anger, right? Anger help us take actions. Anger show us to be more compassionate with others and ourselves right? And it help us take actions. Now, sadness teaches us to be more kind, right? So you can kind of like use the words um, and intentions. You flip the narrative so that you can find inner peace because at the end of the day, whatever you think, you, you find the thought that gives you the most peace <laughs> and most loving. Now, now let's go into the card because <laughs> I feel uh, we can explore more. So I picked this card from Shine. It's a beautiful card, Brittany Carmichael. And I picked this card today. This is for a collective. I tapped seven times on right now, seven people are watching. And now create your own happiness. This is the moon energy. And I'm going to read it. Happiness is a choice, but it's up to you to create it. Just as the moon phases from dark to full, so do our emotions. Emotions are energy in motion, and each one represents a different expression of our inner self. Anger arises when something is unfair. We invoke happiness when something delights us, and sadness engulfs us when we experience loss or pain. Although we can't control our external circumstances, we can control our attitude and how we respond to any given moment. You don't need life to be perfect to create your own happiness. You define your happy. Don't let anyone rain on your parade. Money can buy your temporary, uh, money can buy your temporary pleasure, 
but not everlasting joy. Focus less on what you're lacking and more on what you do have. You can start by enjoying the simple things in life like belly laughing with friends, cuddling with animals, or playing in nature. Spend time each day doing something you love. Mm. Happiness, emotions. You know, like somehow we still probably think that we try to control the situation, control um, our external some circumstances. We can't, we can't do that. <laughs> can, we, can we just acknowledge, can we just acknowledge that we can control other people? We can't control external. Um, yeah, great message today. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Denise. <laughs> Uh, can we just acknowledge that we can't control, but it's like somehow we try to control every time we're feeling like trying to control the situation, that's when we know that we are out of control inside. <laughs> it's like out of control inside. That's why we try to control outside, right? Because the outside is a reflection of us. <laughs> and that's when we judge ourselves again. So that's create that um, cycle. You know, um, I think that um, when you look at the astrology chart, it tells so much about the person. And, um, you know, um, degrees that you have, you know, I'm talking about astro chart. If you guys are interested, you can run your chart from astro.com. Everything is free. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Um, tells you so much about life. And um, I am a 26 Libra. And my moon is 28 Aquarius. And my rising sign is 20 uh, Leo. And that is considered a really high degree. Like anything above 20 is... This is someone that has been incarnated on earth so many times. So now I acknowledge that. But that's a good side. You know, I practice so many things, maybe in the past life, which is a good thing. On the other hand, what I noticed was if you have, if you have a higher degree in your chart, because you live so many lifetimes, you are, when you take the actions, you're thinking, and you more thinking, you need to go through a lot of steps. So you tend to be an overthinker before you take actual action because you've known, you've seen so many. You've done that, you've done this, and you've done that. And maybe that's part of the reason you held your back so much because you've seen it all. You've seen it all. You've seen people fail. You've seen people be successful. But I'm learning that, okay, this is my blessing and this is my course at the same time but anything in life it's about how you use that so there's no right or wrong there's no good or bad where you are is perfect where you are is safe and the feeling of safety for me it almost makes me emotional because there's some part of me that i don't feel safe to express a certain parts of myself or i don't feel safe enough to take some actions or do some actions and take some actions and that is something that you know always hold us back but the person who take actions are the people who kind of just maybe maybe you need you know fake it till you make it and then practice 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 so much that like it's getting to a point where those fear doesn't matter to them anymore. Here's an example. I, um, I was born and raised in Japan. All my family is in Japan. I talked with my mom yesterday. Yeah, me too. Not always feel safe. I talked with my mom. So I have a brother who's recently got engaged. Super exciting. She's going to have a wedding in February, so I'm going home for that. I'm very exciting. But um, because they were having a small wedding and um, they're going to have a wedding in Tokyo, my hometown is a little bit far away from Tokyo. So um, my brother wants to have a little gathering with my uh, cousins and relatives and stuff like that. And um, my mom is uh, planning, you know, because um, my my brother and fiance and fiance is parents are coming, you know, trying to, you know, show some hospitality. And um, she was explaining 
um, and I know her patterns, I know who she is and you know how she is and all that. But the, from the words that she uses, the energy I feel through her, because I have more awareness to these things, it's kind of like she's taking actions, but she's very tired taking those actions, you know, because there's a lot of fear around it. You know, she, she was going to book this one hotel. She, she's an old school, so, you know, she doesn't know how to book um, things online. So if she needs to do something, she will actually go to the hotel to book, <laughs> book a hotel room. And she went to the hotel to book the reservation and the hotel wasn't available because it was um, busy season, summertime. My hometown has beautiful suns, um, especially in summer. So it's a really uh, well-known place for um, summer camps for professional sports like baseball and soccer, stuff like that, and golf, professional golf. <laughs> um, it's a great place and uh, great food and everything. And um, as I'm hearing her story, it's just like I know I'm aware more than ever that how I create, how I see the world is it's so much based on the fear, fear of, fear of what if, fear of what if I can't find a place, fear of what if this doesn't go well, fear of what if um, I don't have food on the table. So the action that you take is based on the fear, right? And I'm fully aware of that. I'm taking the action from love and that's something that I'm practicing. But as I'm winding that part of myself, you know, like it's like we are all beautiful liquid crystal cords, our fascia. But when you like smack yourself, it's kind of like dusting it off. You can see, you know, like it's like cushion or something. It's like you can see the dust comes up. It's same thing when you like decided to tap her, you know, decided to change yourself. And an outside stimuli comes in and to stimulate and cause a sensation. And that's when the triggers and clues are the blessing because that's when you know what you're holding on to so you can make a different decision it's okay to get triggered it's just a clue it's just that blessing that help us understand what we are holding on to so now as I'm being triggered <laughs> you have we all have an initial reaction okay this is how I react normally like it reacts as anger, reacts as betrayal, you know, like all kinds of things. But whenever that emotion comes up, breathing really helps, right? Maybe fashion maneuvers. Okay, I'm feeling triggered. Sometimes I do this so fast. And sometimes I need to laugh at myself that I've been triggered. It's okay. Talk to my inner child. I am safe, I am safe, I am safe, and even though I don't feel safe, I feel, choose to feel safe. And from that point, ask yourself, what do you want to know? What do you want to do with this? And that's when we can take action. Maybe sometimes express how you feel is an answer. And sometimes maybe go to the gym is an answer, right? But stay present, stay present. Don't, don't resist the emotion. The more you resist the emotion that you started to store those emotions and then over time, it's not safe for us to be in this body anymore because you're storing all these emotions inside of you, right? So it's very important that things come up. Like I choose to stay with my body, stay in my body. You know, what I mean by stay in my body is when your soul is so hard to stay in your body, it's like drinking alcohol. When you're like, you know, drinking alcohol and it's like you feel you don't feel your body, you actually don't feel your body because the soul is like somewhere else. You know what I mean? You're not, your soul is not in your body because your body is in a to, in, it's in, intoxicated, right? Same thing. If you're intoxicate yourself with all these toxins of emotions then your soul does not feel safe and we choose that that's connect with their body inner child how we navigate through life so 
you know, it's kind of like you, you've seen all that. Like you've seen this um, people who are pouring, you know, dirty water and like clean water. And because we can't really replace our body, <laughs> in order for us to cleanse this center, we are water. It's to keep pouring a good water, right? Until it's completely cleans out, cleans out. That's the only way. You can't just like throw away and have another body, maybe in the next life. And then you repeat the same cycle. So we got to start now where, you, where we are is perfect. Where we are is where we start. And where we are is exactly where we need to be. That's, the, that's why. So we are all learning to be safe in our womb, <laughs> in our sacred temple. I love myself. Maybe you don't have to love everything that you see in your body or in your life right now. It's like maybe I don't have this job or I don't have this partner. But you got to start from somewhere, right? Take that first step. You know, people say someday or day one. No, one day or day one. <laughs> so hold in that thought and know that you are the only person that can flip the narrative. You are the only person that flipped the narrative. And today, in an hour, we, our step number will change to eight. And eight is a Capricorn energy. So this is the moment right now, right here, right now, to set the intention, how you treat yourself, connect with your heart and your intuition that comes in. I am going to find a harmony between my heart in my thoughts, in my intuition. We think we think with the brain, but everything we think is actually we're perceiving, right? Perceiving based on the frequency where we're in. So as we raise our consciousness, we are able to think better thoughts, higher, more expansive thoughts. So actually, let's do this. Take your right hand on your heart, left hand on the top of your head. Let's take a deep breath through your mouth. Two, three, through your nose, two, three, I am safe and protected in my own body. Thank you, body, for holding all this trauma. I didn't know how to take care of myself properly. I forgive myself for abandoning myself. I forgive myself, I forgive my past for not being here for myself. Maybe there was a time that I ignore, and there was a time that I just neglected myself. There was a time that I abandoned myself and did not leave, did not stay by my side. I am now flipping the narrative. Maybe some emotions are in, intense and triggers are too big. It seems too big to handle. But this is the only way I am going to sit with my emotions and learn what my body needs to tell me. I listen. Emotions want to be heard and want to be acknowledged. And I listen. I'm here to listen so that I can finally break this patterns that I've carried for so many years, maybe life after lifetime. <laughs> so when you feel safe, you're coming back to your body. This is time for us to set the intention, right? When the body feels safe, I am protected, I am safe, I am abundant, I am beautiful. Anything that you want to come, it comes up. I am healthy. I am useful, I am energetic, I am intuitive, I make wise decisions, I listen to my heart. It's easy for me to listen to my thoughts and intuitions. It's safe for me to feel all emotions. I, have, I make wise decisions and respond to emotions the most optimal, expansive way, <laughs> joyful way. 
How are you guys feeling? I feel a warmth with my heart and from my solar plexus. It's safe for me to go through the emotions. And maybe the sensation comes up, right? Like I'm, you know, a couple of days, I was ex experiencing um, intense itchiness around my, around my tailbone and around my right butt. <laughs> so itchy and I'm like putting on creams it's like what's going on but I know that I'm just releasing my old patterns you know that things did need to come out but my intention is that it comes come out in a most safe way that don't hurt myself and don't hurt others yeah thank you Lee that was so lovely thank you yeah, this was good. Thank you. I've been trying to release emotions that have come up recently, but I feel stuck somehow. This has helped a lot. Yeah, thank you, Monita. A great reminder how much I need to pour back to myself. I need to talk nicer like this to myself regularly. I'm so hard on myself. Yeah, I'm the same way, you know, like that's why well, it makes me emotional because I think what happens, you know, going back to my higher degree, so for Astrotar, I'm not saying this to boast myself. It's about, I'm saying this because I think the more you know, the longer it takes for us to actually take actions. Because <laughs> we, we think we know stuff, we know shit, right? <laughs> like we've seen it all. But, and then like maybe because you you lived so many life, lives, then you've seen it all that you just you know, scare yourself and you don't know because you're so scared of making mistakes. You're scared of, you, you know, because the more you know. <laughs> and the, the more you know, the less you know, and you know that. That's why that, in a sense, you cause more fear. But that's why you sometimes you, you, look, at your, you, you look at your child or someone who's so relentless, maybe because they were immature, and you kind of envy of them, right? Jealous of them because jealous of them because it's like, oh wow, they can take those relentless, fearless actions because they don't know better. <laughs> I am seeing myself doing it now and reprogramming. But know that you had to live that life, you had to see the patterns and embrace that. It's you good. You can see all those judgment you notice things but how do you look at ourselves now <laughs> knowing is one thing it's great that you notice those things judgment can give us good measurement right so measurement is good we're not taking out we still have that great judgment <laughs> we still have the great assessment and measurement and uh you know so those criteria is important check 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 you have that side of you but it's time for us to use that as an advantage not to harm ourselves not to judge yourself to pull ourselves down because of that power because of the ability to do so so going back to my mom's story so I noticed my mom making decisions, taking actions based on fear, out of fear. And I love watching, my, one of my guilt, guilty pleasure, pleasure is to watch reality TV, like real estate show, <laughs> real estate show. And look at like, you know, I love looking at beautiful houses. But another thing I love is to pay attention to the, um, the thought patterns of all these successful people are making. Like they deal with millions and make higher, like crazy commission, right? Dealing with high, high profile clients. You can judge all, you, all the rich people, but I think we all have a power to be rich. But do you believe in that? It's all about comes down to our belief system and reprogramming our mind. That's why we people pay thousands of dollars to Joe Dispenza, <laughs> to all his coaches, right? And I am 
embodying, you know? Because uh, you can preach all you want, but what did you accomplish through these process, right? Some people are so good at talking about it, but some people are not good at or not ready to face their own demons. And, you know, my sensei Gary always talk about those, you know, coaches and philosophers and yogis come out to human garage and keep seeing how broken they are because the higher you reach, you would just ignore some of the parts of yourself because of the shame or because of the embarrassment. I don't want to be that type of coach or type of leaders myself. So it's for me an authenticity. I am learning, but I know that as I'm working through this, I am going to get where I want to be. And that's, that's why I show up. That's why I show up and talk about it. So now, Real Estate Reality Show I've seen people, you know, like real estate is such a stressful job. <laughs> I can't imagine myself, you know, like there's always a sacrifice, right? But there's this high adrenaline that push you forward. I don't think it's for everybody. But by looking at those, thing, those things, one thing I notice is they are so quick to last minute change they are so adaptable to last minute change they go through their emotions right i can see the good agent and not so good agent and um so good agent knows they were so fluid and adapted to quick change and last minute change and when they in go through the emotion like defeated or you know they lose the contract or things didn't work out because there will be a lot of cold calls that you, you know it's just kind of like wasting your time what am I doing or like you thought that you were so close to making this like higher commission and things didn't work out you go through that emotions you feel it fully you know let's say you you defeat yourself for the next one hour and go through the emotions and that and but you know you you convince yourself not convince yourself necessary but you stay with that emotions and transmute that emotion faster and that that i think the guru is not guru that master of emotion is someone that you sit with an emotion and transmute it so quickly <laughs> this pattern so so after that, it doesn't bother them anymore. And that pattern seems to be so fast for the master of emotions. That's where I want to get to. It's getting better for me, but some emotions are really hard. I really try to, I find myself trying to control the situation, trying to convince someone. But I think when you get to the point where things do not bother, bother me anymore, that's a very powerful place. When someone's doing something to me or disrespectful behavior or whatever, I have my strong boundaries and I feel emotion, I acknowledge that, but I'm also acknowledge that they were just merely projecting their stuff onto us. That's a very powerful place. So now you get tougher <laughs> as you go through life experiences. As you get tougher, I like to be tougher in a, on a solid foundation rather than being rigid, right? I think there are two ways to be tough. <laughs> you get so tough that you get so rigid, right? You get so tough that nothing bothers you, but it's not to ignoring or neglecting emotion. Then that's majority of the people who are tough have been doing. That's why when they break down, it's like break down like this, ah, you, you've been wearing so many masks for yourself, right? Maybe with the plastic surgery, like I've seen, like, you know, I love my reality, real estate show uh, from the selling sunset to owning Manhattan. And I can see the corporate culture, how they affect them, right? How they are also attracted to those corporate culture. When you look at selling sunset, that's like that, you know, <laughs> people are like, eat you off, you know? eat you out what's it? no what's the, what am i talking about <laughs> they will eat you if you're not aware boundaries is important and 
I think we're all learning to be tough and solid, unbothered with strong boundaries, but it's not to shield yourself, not to mask yourself, but it's very fluid. You're still humans and you feel all those emotions. But I am here to learn and transmute that emotion so quickly. This is good for me. This is good for me. This is good for me. This has helped me grow. This helped me be more confident, helped me understand more compassion about myself. So flipping the narrative, flipping the narrative. This energy is good for me. This energy is good for me. Some energy of the day is so much heavier than the uh, regular um, the day of the you know other days, but all energies are equally important. I'm not going to discriminate that emotion. It's all here. So let's. Um, I think we're all going through this Capricorn energy in um, uh, 45 minutes or so. So let's think through, I am going to think through this patterns, how I can be tough with all the outside stimuli, tougher and tougher and more expansion and more tolerant, <laughs> but solid and fluid and move like water and know that everything come at me actually safe for me. Whatever I feel is safe for me. Now, once you, um, in 45 minutes, once the energy change, and that becomes the decision and commitment day, a day to commit to loving ourselves, to decide to be honest and genuine, starting with ourselves. Since we have had a major timeline shift, our hearts have been feeling out what is going to stay and what is going to leave. For the last week, we have had the opportunity to assess what truly resonates with this higher joy vibration. And today we have the opportunity to make the first cut based on the new for our heart's best interest. If you're ready, go ahead and make that declaration within yourself. So that is that making decision. What kind of decision are you going to make? What kind of commitment are you going to make? What kind of commitment you make yourself? I made the commitment, I love myself and accept myself all the way. <laughs> and all emotions are valid. I accept all my emotions. All emotions want to be heard. All emotions want to be acknowledged. I have a power to respond differently for my advantage. In fact, all emotions come out to me. Hit my fascia is here to teach me about something. When I get triggered, that's exactly I've been cleansed and respond differently so I can finally break the pattern and break its breakthrough. So thank you, emotions. Thank you, everything. My Thank you, my external circumstances are here to raise me high. My life, my purpose in life, is connect with myself in the most deepest level, <laughs> authentic self. And because I know that if I focus on that, everything will fall into place. I don't need to control anything outside of me. And I'm going to get there, <laughs> sometimes not. So because I know that when I find center and getting into this deep X core, I am triggered. Maybe it's a good thing. I was triggered last week that I have been exposed to the deepest core of my self, which was I don't feel safe within my body. I don't fully feel, I have fear of, um, fear of not, fear of not being liked, fear of, I have less, I have less fear of to be seen right now because I've been practicing and showing up for myself, but not being liked, that's a huge one for me. Fear of not being liked by someone that I really like. <laughs> so, I also fear of not being liked by someone who I don't like. <laughs> that part needs to go. <laughs> I shouldn't care for people who don't even like me. Why do I need to be liked by someone who I don't even like? Like, I don't like your energy. I can say that, you know, allow myself to say that, right? Like, you see all kinds of people. It's like, I don't discriminate. Everyone's welcome. 
but everyone comes with their own projection and their own trigger. And something in them trigger with my through my actions and then they act a certain way. It's like, well, it is what it is. That's why where you are is where you are. So I can see that. But now I am talking from this higher up right now. But I'm also I'm also human. I'm also learning same thing, right? So we are all learning through our own experiences. So let's just be, uh, in the end, kind to ourselves, kind to others. We are all learning. Kind to yourself. They are where they are because of the patterns. I am where I am because the pattern that I have. And the pattern I have is right now it becoming shaken up and being tested, being challenged, so that I can be fluid, solid, adaptive, fluid <laughs> entity like this right now. I, my patterns are very fluid and solid. It's not like a solid structure, right? That's when we are truly strong. I, you know, Japan is a um, country of earthquakes. And so the seismics, the technology is really, really advanced. And so when you look at seismics of uh, Japan, and I've seen some documentaries, and then people do talk about it because the country of earthquakes, um, how they built the house is actually to allow the house to shake. Because if the house is, let's say there's a soil and the ground, and then there's a building, and if that house is too solid, and that earthquake, the plate is moving and it's solid, and it doesn't move with that, it's actually more potent and prone to break. And so Japan seismic is like the, the highest building. It's actually, there's a soil, there's a, there's a platform, and this platform, on the platform, there's a building. And so between this platform and the soil, it, they actually make it in a way so that it actually adjusts itself. So that this is solid, this relationship is solid, but the ground, the root chakra of the building is fluid. Does that make sense? So when that earthquake happens, and this doesn't go like stay on the same spot. When you stay on the same spot, that's when you go like this, you can imagine. So the earthquakes happen, right? Earthquake happen. You know what happened to the solid, solid ground, solid um, platform, foundation? It's just kind of just dancing. <laughs> that's a great um, explanation I just came up with, right? Again, if you have a rigid, rigid structure and it doesn't like to move, with the earthquakes, it has to move with the soil. It goes like this, and you are in a washing machine. <laughs> That's when you go, Haha, right? But if you have that foundation, it's where we're shoken up, right? This is what's happening. You have a solid, fluid foundation. When the earth started to move, it doesn't get affected by it because as the bottom moves, it's adjusting itself so that this is safe. So we are, what we are creating right now is when the outside stimuli comes, we're being, we are trained, we're challenged to be more fluid so that it moves our foundation. Let's think of, let's literally think about our root chakra, our center where we belong is like this. So dancing with the mother earth, <laughs> so it's not like dancing with the mother earth but it's like you know you you hear it you acknowledge what's happening but you're dancing right this is like riding a wave this is like the riding a wave this is you root chakra this is earth whatever comes at you and let's go like this you're dancing you're dancing right it's like I always say this, when you work with fascia, there's a permission. Can I touch myself? Can I touch you? It's a permission. And then once you connect, establish a connection. It's like same thing with partner dance. You know, think of salsa. There's a giver and there's a receiver, followers, and then um, followers and what is that? Receiver. <laughs> I forgot. Anyways, you go like this. And when you dance, it's a negotiation. It's a dance, right? So it's like that kind of, um, kind of like that 
that energy. Same thing, that kind of that energy. Yes, Jonathan. <laughs> that kind of energy. So when someone come at me with angry, come at me being angry, how we respond. Do we respond when someone's angry? And it's like, okay, I'm gonna move, move, move. Or I'm gonna move. <laughs> someone's angry. Okay, I am like, I am here. Okay, someone is angry, moving like this. If, you, if, you're, if you're here, you're gonna move like this, or you're gonna move like this. <laughs> when you look at it, if you have very solid, uh, solid but fluid background, this is what it does. So um, with the seismic, you know, the perspective, like in Japan, they have the technology where they observe the shock and minimize it so that it doesn't go crazy with that. Uh, so maybe that's what we need to practice. When outside is going about to get crazy, the outside, whatever that is, and um, you go like this. So observe our fascia is so fluid and expanded. So when that, when that energy hits our aura, aura is our fascia too. And then we feel the sensation. And it's like, okay, I feel this, I feel this, I feel this. Do you dance with them, right? And then, but how you dance with them is where you, our power is. That's, that's another way of saying um, respond differently. So, okay, I feel this. Okay, what's my best, re what's my best response here? <laughs> so, as we expand more, we have more cushion. Fascia expanded, right? We have more cushion. So that we're more expanding, we can observe the shock, observe the shock better. When you observe the shocks, and then you know how to flow so much better, so that when the outside moving so fast, it doesn't move and it does correct itself, align itself. That is the technique of the seismic of Japan's high rise building. That's why. In this country, country gets so many earthquakes. You see that technology, the building does not collapse so easily. It's not like boom, boom, you know, it's not like. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so let's really practice that observing shock. I love that. Let's explore this more tomorrow. So tomorrow, Gary normally is going to live from 7 to 9. Uh, AM PSC. I don't like to have a live when Gary's online. So let's, uh, I will show up. Normally this live start at 8 AM, but let's start at 9 AM. But um, uh, it's going to be a very short one because I, I do have a meeting every uh, Wednesday. So that, that's probably the, the pattern uh, that I'm going to have. Yeah. I love this so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate the blessing. That was good. I will talk more about that. Let's let's think about this. You're the earth. Uh, there's the earth. You're here, right? It's like you've been like this, right? You've been shaken up. It's like you know, like a cooking. You know, when you put that flour, and that's what we're doing. And it's like you're filtering through all these toxins right now, right? But when you have a full flow, fluid, solid foundation then you're good. But if you're too solid, you're stuck with it, that's when this needs to go collapse, right? Same thing when the outside seemingly comes in, when the outside comes in, so this is the energy, hit my aura, and it's like, uh, 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 <laughs> you dance your own beat, <laughs> what's your rhythm, right? Yeah, I love that. What's your rhythm? What's your frequency? Your frequency, outside frequency, how do you dance? It's just the inspiration. So, yeah, let's explore that. I hope you guys enjoy the live. Thank you for joining my speaking meditation. <laughs> I'm loving showing up and talking and transmuting myself and whoever watching transmuting yourself and learning through this process because at the end of it 
uh, partially I'm showing up like this because um, I noticed that. So I've been, I've been managing my emotions. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm managing my stress level through fashion maneuvers. And so my, my, my nervous system is calmed down relatively way be you know way calmer than before now because my nervous system's calmed down my perception is high i notice things i hear things literally my senses are really high like you know i smell things i detect like <laughs> i smell people <laughs> like crazy <laughs> like literally smell people i hear things and i you know it's like my senses are really high which is a good thing it's supposed to be like that right so now now I notice my pattern, my now I get to work on my toxic pattern stored in my matrix. <laughs> so, so that's why I can now finally work on myself, unwinding my pattern so that I can show up and I can shine my light brighter than ever without any distortions. So, thank you guys. I'm going to go amazing or more perceptive yeah well that's what fashion maneuvers does right you you remove your stress and you switch your food and you eat start eating more organic food and so that your body is not too hard uh, working too hard you know trying to reduce the inflammation in your body because everything is actually you know start from inflammation every disease start from inflammation in your body why is your body inflamed? Because of the chemicals you put in your air, uh, in your food, um, or the thoughts that you put, and those things, emotions, chemicals, and combine and your patterns and create the beautiful, beautiful harmony to cause inflammation. But we have fire in us. We are water. We are fire. We are uh, soil. We are air. Right? Four elements. Are we using our precious fire to harm ourselves? It doesn't make any sense. Why are we harming ourselves? I want to use that fire to move forward with life, right? So in order for us to do so, is notice the pattern that's harming us. What is harming me? What is this emotions telling me, teaching me? So let's really practice that. Focus on the subtle moment, subtle pattern. And at the end of it, you don't have to examine everything. It's about knowing that you love yourself no matter what. You have your solid, solid root chakra, solid ground. Whatever happens, I know that I'm okay. That's a strong safe. I am safe. A safety, you know, something that I, I am unwinding because the deep core that I've been shown and exposed last week, two weeks ago, was that I don't feel safe in my body. So now that that's my old story, throw that away. I am safe in my body. My root chakra is solid. My root chakra is fluid. Whatever comes up, I, am, I know how to dance. I do know how to dance. Whatever comes up, I have my own rhythm. I have my own rhythm. I can choose to resonate with that frequency or I can choose to keep my own drum, beat my own drum, right? What is my drum? What is my rhythm? We don't even know sometimes, right? We, we, gotta, we gotta remember what it's like to beat your own drum, what it's like to beat your own, you know, keep your own rhythm. What is your rhythm? Is your rhythm solid? Is your rhythm more flowy, right? Adaptable? I am safe in my body. My root chakra is solid. I have my own rhythm. I love that. Let me let me screenshot. <laughs> Yay, let's let's do the affirmation to finish. City Lotus, thank you. That's a beautiful affirmation. Tapping into the heart and the top of your head, the brain. Or oh, root chakra, whatever you feel. Okay, I'm gonna go hard and then my my uh my uh, roots. I am safe in my body, my root chakra is solid, I have my own rhythm. I am safe in my body, my root chakra is solid, I have my own rhythm. I make good choices, I make wise choices for myself. I respond in the most joyful, expansive way. 
whatever comes up in my life. I am safe in my body. My root chakra is solid. I am my own rhythm. Yeah, feeling safe in my body, feeling safe in my sacred temple, feeling safe. I don't need to leave my body. My soul doesn't need to leave my body. Stay in my body so that I feel all emotions, all parts of myself, sit with that emotions and listen. Thank you. Thank you for showing me. I choose to release this. I choose to love myself. I am safe in my body. I am safe in my body. That's a powerful affirmation for the day. Thank you so much for co-creating. And I hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Tomorrow will be night, uh, so one hour later than usual. And I hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody.